Okay, we're back, and we're talking about this powerful little Christian lady. She appears to me on television to be about uh, maybe five feet tall, maybe a little taller, a little shorter. Uh, a, a brunette, um, a, a white lady, uh, and by the way, a, a registered Democrat who is the clerk of court for Kentucky. And she refused to issue marriage license because she did not want her uh, signature uh, affixed to a same-sex marriage. And uh, she spent at least five days in jail, held in contempt of court, um, this little Christian lady. And thank God, if, if the reports that have, have, have been given to me, if the report is true, uh, by the time you see this, uh, Kim should be freed, and uh, I, I praise the Lord for her. Now, uh, her case is an interesting one because before I deal with, with, with her case, I, I want to deal with the way this young lady has been treated. Here are a few things that we know about uh, Kim Davies that we didn't know before. Kim Davies, according to U.S. News, has been divorced three times. First divorce was in 94. Her second divorce was in 2006. And her third divorce was in 2008. She gave birth to twins five months after divorcing her first husband, and they were fathered by her third husband and adopted by her second husband. Davis worked at the clerk's office at the time of each divorce and has since remarried. Oh, and by the way, uh, during that time, uh, it was not a problem never mentioned it was not she was still reelected and she still worked there and no one seemed to have a problem with her lifestyle Davis has described her desire to strictly adhere uh, to the Bible in stock terms thus far as showing uh, that showing that she's not bending on on, on issuing license to same-sex marriage uh, she said for her uh, issuing those license is a, is, a, is a heaven or hell thing and it violates her central teachings uh, uh, from the Bible. It violates her Christianity. And she's been called a, a hypocrite. Uh, she's been called names. Now, I was under the impression that the pro-same-sex marriage crowd, the pro-homosexual people, the progressives and the liberals who uh, promote uh, these deviant lifestyles, also people who didn't judge anybody. I actually thought, according to these people, it didn't matter how many times you've been married and how many babies you've had in or out of wedlock. Because after all, everyone's got to live out their own truth, right? You know, after all, uh, no one has the right to judge or to publicly shame anyone. These are people who, who are advocates, who support, Two men marrying each other. These are people who support a heinous lifestyle. Two women marrying each other. And these are the same people who now find uh, Miss Davies to be a, a, a hypocrite and, uh, and want to bring up her past sins. And they call her a hypocrite for not adhering to Christian standards even when she was not a Christian. The things that they're mentioning about uh, Miss Davis' life are things that happened before she met the Lord. She gave Jesus Christ her life. The Lord forgave her of her sins, washed her clean. It's apparent she's in a good church where they're teaching the word of God to her. And she has demonstrated more courage. Oh my, she has demonstrated more of a Christian commitment than most Christians. And she has stood her ground, a young lady, a young lady, yes, with a, a, a checkered past, but uh, the past is washed in the blood. She's a part of the body of Christ, and, uh, and, and, she's, and she's a Democrat. And, and yet, the Democrats have come after her. Uh, the liberals and the progressives have shamed her. Uh, she's been thrown in jail. I mean, we got lawbreakers, real criminals out there uh, uh, who, are, uh, who are not arrested. We have people to do heinous things, and they do not uh, get put in jail. Lois Lerner, 
uh, violated uh, when you when you plead the fifth. You can't testify and then plead the fifth. But she did. She got her retirement and she's going on with her life and nothing has happened to her. No one has been arrested over the fast and furious uh, uh, a scandal that took place. And there are so many other things I'm going to talk to you about. But this young lady, uh, Miss Davis, Davies, it, she gets put in jail. She suffers as a Christian. Uh, good news, Miss Davies. The Bible says rejoice and be exceedingly glad. The Bible says that when we suffer as a Christian, it is proof that the spirit of God and of glory rests upon you. Well, I tell you, the spirit of God and of glory rests upon Miss Davies. Miss Davies, well, oh, certainly not to the degree because they haven't taken her life. Uh, the Hebrew Hebrew writer says to the Hebrews, you have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. She hadn't she hadn't been put to death, but she has been thrown in jail. She she has been uh, uh, an example of standing for the faith. She reminds me of God's faithful martyr who is mentioned in Revelation chapter two, verse 13, the faithful martyr Antipas. Antipas was a powerful martyr. He stood for Jesus Christ. Uh, according to tradition, Antipas uh, uh, was reputed to be the bishop of the church at Pergamos, and he was, a, he was martyred for his faith because of his consistent faithfulness, his consistent faithful witness in the face of all satanic evil that was present there. When Antipas was advised, Antipas, the whole world is against you. Antipas replied, then I am against the whole world. Rather than giving up on his Christian faith, he stood his ground and, uh, and he was martyred, but that's all right. He stood for the Lord. Everybody knows, and you're familiar, I'm sure, with God's faithful martyr, Polycrop. What a man of God he was when Polycrop was faced with martyrdom, when they told him to uh, 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 disown the faith, when they when they brought him into the arena, a voice spoke from heaven. Other people that heard it, where the God of the Bible said to Polycrop, be strong, Polycrop, and play the man. Be strong and be a man. Others in the stadium heard the voice, but no one knew where the voice came from. I believe that it was the voice of the Lord. And they told him to, uh, uh, to denounce his faith. They told him to, to pledge his loyalty to Caesar, uh, to worship Caesar as God. They told him not to be a mortar, give up on this Jesus Christ. And he said this, for 86 years I have served him, Polycrop declared, and he has not wronged me, uh, once wronged me, or he has done me no wrong. How can I blaspheme my king and my savior? And Polycrop was put to death. He was martyred. And uh, what a mighty man of God he is. And, and, and here we are today, certainly to a, a much lesser degree, but we're headed in the wrong direction. We see this young lady, oh, just a strong young lady. I've never met her, as I forementioned. I hope to someday, uh, Kim Davis. I want to shake her hand. I want to hug her neck. I want to shake her husband's hand. Uh, I want to send him an offering and let him know that there are some sanctified people that they've never met who have been impressed by their faith. And I pray that she continues her stand for the Lord. I'm glad she's out of jail, but I, I understand her position. Now, I agree with a story that was written by uh, Ryan Anderson in the New York Times. He gives uh, on the, his uh, op-ed, he gives his opinion. He says this, he says, Kim Davies, uh, the clerk of Rowan County, Kentucky, went to jail last week. There was no good reason for her to be there. Americans can expect more conflict over a religious conscience and same-sex marriage if we don't find a way to coexist peacefully. Miss Davis has become a symbol of what happens when we don't. 
Some on the left say that you must do every aspect of your job despite your belief or resign. But this has never been the practice in the United States. We have a rich history of accommodating uh, conscientious objectors in a variety of settings, including government employees. Do we really want to say that an otherwise competent employee must quit or go to jail if there is another alternative. We shouldn't do that. Indeed, one state, North Carolina, my great state, has already shown how to accommodate uh, conscience and ensure that all citizens receive legal documents, including marriage license, for which they are eligible. Now, by the way, my friends, I'm on record saying that marriage should not be redefined. And, and as far as I'm concerned, it hasn't been redefined. I agree with the God of the Bible. It's still a union between a man and a woman. Look at this. First thing, I'm back to this op-ed now. First thing to acknowledge, however, is that Miss Davis didn't cause this problem. And I agree with uh, uh, Anderson here. He says the Supreme Court did. When the court ruled in June that same-sex marriage is uh, is a constitutional right, and I challenge you to read the 14th Amendment and, and see if you can find it in there. It redefined marriage for the nation in a way that I and many others do not believe was constitutionally just, and it redefined Miss Davies' job. Had same-sex marriage come to Kentucky through the legislature, lawmakers could have simultaneously created religious liberty protections and reasonable accommodations for civil servants. But the Supreme Court decided this issue itself, and as predicted by the dissenting justices, primed the nation for conflict. The Supreme Court made this mess and created this problem that we now have. Men who behave as though they are God. Men who are unelected change the definition of marriage. And my friends, what they did were and is today wrong. The Bible says this in Psalms. Oh, I can just get it here. Praise the Lord. 82 says, God standeth in the congregation of the mighty, and he judgeth among the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and accept the persons of the wicked? Look at this. It says, defend uh, the poor and the fatherless. Do justice to the afflicted and the needy. Deliver the poor and the needy. Rid them out of the hands of the wicked. They know not, listen to the word of God, neither will they understand. They walk on in darkness. All the foundations of the earth are out of course. My friends, all of our laws, God's orders have been moved. They're out of course. He says this to the judges. I have said that you are Elohims. You are judges. You are gods. He's speaking to the judges in the courtroom. And all of your children, all and all of you are children of the Most High. But you shall die like men and shall fall like princes. Supreme Court justices, you're going to have to answer to the holy God, the true and living God, for your decisions. You created this mess. Now I'm going to come back and talk more to you about this, but the Bible says this. My question, friend, is what say you?